Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Off-Grid Hunter. So today is going to be a really interesting video for you if you're interested in trail cams, uh, specifically with solar power setups that can allow your cameras to go two, sometimes three years without actually having to change the batteries. So um, I'm going to show you one that I actually made homemade that I think is far superior to anything I've ever seen done DIY before, as well as anything that's commercially available today. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And uh, first, I just wanted to give you just an overview of it. So this is the box, the panel. And uh, if you can see on the bottom side here, the output leads. And uh, just a few, go over a few things about components on this before I uh, really get into things. But uh, basically, this is an electrical weatherproof box. This is a uh, six volt um, battery solar power charger. Uh, it's, uh, I think this was a Wild Game Innovations. Basically, it was to charge a Wild Game Innovations device. Um, it came with this cable and uh, yeah, uh, if you have a 12 volt, uh, the reason I got 6 volt is because that's the camera I wanted to power with this. Uh, if you have a 12 volt camera, basically you just get the correct solar power charger for that and the battery to go along with it. Um, next, I'm going to open up the box and show you what the inside looks like and I'll just kind of walk through how I built it and uh, what you need to do this uh, yourself if you uh, so wish. All right, uh, just a little closer view. Here is the underside of this. I just want to show you how it's kind of put together. So basically these weatherproof, this is a steel weatherproof uh, electrical enclosure. Um, I, I chose steel over a plastic or fiberglass because I wanted to use tin screws to screw the actual solar panel onto it. And uh, here in the bottom, I've got a little chain on here for the uh, lid. I think that was part of the box, if I don't, if uh, memory serves me right. Here again is the output leads. There's multiple ways you can hook your camera up to this. Either um, you can put the plug ends on and just plug it in, or you simply just unscrew these, put the wire around there, tighten it back up, pinch the wire in, and you're good to go. And uh, let's go ahead and open the box. The one good thing with these electrical enclosures, if you're doing something like this, is um, basically you can get them in every shape and size. And what I would recommend is instead of buying the box first, get your battery that you're going to use and then find the box to fit it because the battery is the key component that you need to accommodate on this. Don't buy the box and then try to find the battery. Um, I, and also, I always try to find the smallest box possible to fit this stuff. Um, you could put a big box out, but then it would just um, basically uh, just be excess for no reason. So, all right. So this just comes off. So if you're in the field, this would just hang and the chain's short enough that the electrical cable coming from the solar panel into the battery um, isn't going to have tension on it. All right, so I don't have the battery hooked up right now, but this is basically just a, uh, an electronic six volt battery. I believe this was marine grade. Um, it's sealed lead acid, non-spillable. This is definitely what you want. Um, a good quality battery that uh, has all of the um, uh, power and the correct specs to uh, run your trail camera. Um, basically, um, if you look in the trail camera booklets, it'll tell you what kind of power the um, camera runs off six or 12 volt and what not to exceed. And uh, yeah, so do some research on that. Uh, every trail camera is slightly different, but um, it's definitely worth doing. Now, this uh, jute insulation I put in here, what I have found specifically in cold weather climates is if you 
keep your batteries off of um, cold steel or uh, concrete, any other hard surface that can chill the battery even more, the battery stays way or charged way longer, way better. So I just put that insulation on the back side and on the bottom just so the battery doesn't have direct contact with the cold steel. All right, now what I'm gonna show you here, so you can take a look inside. Okay, so basically um, this is just like a little grommet in here that is coming from the solar panel. These are just two, those two, um, I don't, can't remember what they call them, but the two leads. I just drilled a hole in the box, put them in, and then um, what I did was I made up some wires. And basically the wires from the, the solar panel that if, say for instance, the solar panel could put out enough to actually charge the camera. I wired it so the solar panel and the camera leads were the same. And then basically these plug into the battery and the solar panel has, uh, I believe it's called a diode in it, which allows charge to go into the battery, but not to drain out through the battery. Um, so basically it charges one way, but not the other. So if it's nice and sunny out, um, the battery can charge. Uh, and then at the same time, the camera can be running and suck power off the battery. Um, I don't believe the solar panel could ever put out enough power to actually power the, the uh, camera directly, but basically solar panel charges the battery, camera draws off the battery, and then at nighttime, um, when the solar panel isn't producing any kind of power, the diode prevents the battery from draining back out through the solar panel and the only thing that can draw on the power is the camera. So this is very simple. Um, this wire is, uh, the way they code these is um, with one has a stripe and one is black. Um, I believe the one with the stripe is the hot, typically that's how I've wired it anyway. And the one that's just black um, is it just goes with the, I'm going to call it the neutral, that's the wrong term, but just with the negative polarity on these DC stuff. And um, very simple wiring. Uh, all you're doing really is taking the solar panel back um, to your output leads in the battery, and that's it. There's nothing to it. So just remember, um, keep red as your positive, black as your negative hook it all up and plug your camera in. And uh, that's all there is to it, so. All right, uh, so that was how I put together this homemade uh, solar charger for my trail camera. Now, um, there is a couple things I'm gonna comment on regarding these uh, solar powered trail camera uh, things. So this uh, specific setup here um, because I've got a quality battery and uh, I always put these um, facing directly south into the sun. These can actually last for up to three years in the right conditions if you have mild weather. Um, if you've got harsh winters, probably a year and a half, two years without having to actually change your camera batteries. Um, to me, it's really worth it. I hate uh, carrying around double A's and throwing them out all the time. And uh, the other thing I was going to comment on too is the newer cameras that I've seen out uh, that have the built-in solar char chargers, specifically the spy point. Um, there's a big problem with actually having the solar panel mounted on the camera like that. Now, I haven't looked enough into the spy point to know if um, you can take that off and move it. But assuming that it's fixed in place, which it looks like it is, uh, the best um, direction for a trail camera to face is north and the best direction for a solar panel to face is south. And you don't really want to face your um, 
trail camera south because the sun will give you a lot of false triggers and you don't really want to face that kind of a trail camera north because then your solar panel won't actually get any charge so i don't know why they built that setup the way it is like i said maybe it comes off and you can actually relocate it or move it but uh, in this homemade setup um, i always set the battery and the solar panel facing due south all the time in a sunny spot and then i set the camera up where i want it typically you can set the solar chargers up within uh, five to ten feet of the actual camera uh, five feet is more than enough and 99.9 .9 percent of the cases i've seen rarely have i seen a situation where you'd need to go more than that um, and uh, the other thing too is the uh, connections from the trail cameras to the solar panels you can either buy the wiring package sometimes they come with the cameras from factory either it's not hard to get uh, the plug for the camera that will uh, basically work and um, the opposite end you base you just set up in here so there's not very much to figure out do your own research though get comfortable with um, the voltage and how much battery you need um, the amp hours are an important piece of the battery because that uh, will basically tell you how uh, how long your battery's going to be able to last if you have a higher amp hour battery and a fairly low draw uh, camera that battery could last an incredibly long time especially if you are only taking periodic pictures and uh, you have a lot of sun if you're taking a lot of regular pictures but you still have full sun that still will charge the battery a ton so definitely a good project i would recommend trying this to anybody if uh, you're a little bit nervous with electrical work or wiring um, set one up try it out on a cheap uh, trail camera or an old one that you have that you don't really care about uh, just to make sure that uh, you're not frying your camera by accident you don't want to hook a 12 volt battery up to a 6 volt camera and things like that make sure it's all compatible um, if you guys have any questions about the build of this or what I did or how I did it um, just put comments below uh, make sure you give the video a like and share it with any of your friends that you might uh, find it valuable and uh, yeah anyways we'll see you guys in the next video and have a great one